Swashbucklers, you're listening to Under the Crossbones. My name is Phil Johnson. I'm your host for the show. Thank you once again for tuning in. A uh, welcome to all the new listeners that we got. Uh, if you heard me on the um, Dork Forest with Jackie Cation last week talking about pirates, and you came over here to check it out, welcome. If you're a fan of uh, E-Banished Privateers and you found it through them, welcome to the show. Hope you stick around. We got lots of cool stuff happening for you over the next couple of weeks. So this is episode number 56. Uh, Fun fact about 56. Two fun facts about 56, actually. The first is that uh, Shirley Temple, child actor, uh, wore 56 curls in her hair. And her mother set them herself so she knew that there were exactly 56 curls in her hair every single time. Talk about stage mothering. Oof. And uh, uh, the other fun fact is that according to Aristotle, there are 56 uh, layers to the universe, uh, which I think proves without a shadow of a doubt uh, that we are not living in the Matrix. We are all living in Shirley Temple's hair. I'm pretty sure that, all right, maybe not. Maybe it was a, it was a theory. It was a theory. My guest on the show today is Matt Arthur. He's the host of the Pirate History Podcast at PirateHistoryPodcast.com. Now, don't get confused with that one uh, and Craig Buddy's show, The History of Pirates Podcast, which is at HistoryOfPiratesPodcast.com. Very similar titles, uh, but they're both awesome. If you want to hear my... Um, my uh, interview with Craig Buddy, uh, you can go back to episode number 22 for that. And there are not a lot of pirate podcasts out there. Uh, there's me and uh, there's these other two guys, Craig and Matt, who are doing their shows. And that's pretty much it. So I've had them both on. And we're going to talk to Matt Arthur today. If you want to hear my interview with Craig Buddy, you go back to episode number 22. I am just back in town from Las Vegas. Uh, recently uh, just finished up the World Series of Comedy, the seventh annual and uh, my seventh annual, too. I've been to all of them. Uh, and it's a load of fun. It's like summer camp for comedians. And uh, uh, I didn't have a good set. Had a bad set. Had a real bad set. Uh, I was on last Tuesday on the uh, 7 o'clock show. And uh, the show was going great. I was number six in the lineup. And, uh, and and the first five comedians went up. All did great. I'm like, good. This audience sounds like they're in good shape. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to have a good set. And then I went out there to pretty much crickets. A few little laughs here and there. Uh, it wasn't silent for eight minutes, but it was uh, pretty freaking painful. Not a fun set, and so I did not move on in the competition. It's weird, and we've talked about it before on this show, how sometimes the joke works, sometimes the joke doesn't work, and for whatever reason, that night, that audience was not having anything from me. So anyway, whatever. I'll go back next year, try again. Uh, big event here for uh, Under the Crossbones, and I want you to mark this on your calendar. If you are anywhere near Burbank, California, on Monday, the September the 19th, we all know what day that is. That's Talk Like a Pirate Day. Monday, September 19th, we are doing a live podcast recording at the Story Tavern in Burbank, California. Yes, it's going to be cool. We're going to have some cool Hollywood people on the show. It's going to be great. I have got, um, uh, we're working on some cool guests. Uh, and I think it's going to be like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to do it early before the uh, the bar that we're doing it in gets all busy and loud. They're doing a the whole thing all day there. We're probably going to do the podcast about four or five o'clock. So come on over to the Story Tavern in Burbank, California. Take a if you got to get off work a little bit early, just sneak out, sneak out. Tell them you're going to talk about pirates, and it's going to be awesome. So that is Monday, September nineteenth. Talk like a pirate day at the Story Tavern in Burbank, California. Other than that, I do not have a lot of gigs in September. Uh, I was planning on doing festival stuff. Festival stuff got all moved around, and uh, so I have a very light schedule. I have a couple things coming up, a couple private gigs. Uh, again, you can always get me for a private gig. But uh, Wednesday, uh, September the 14th, I will be headlining a show at the On the Edge Coffee House in Clovis, California. That's in the Fresno area. And I will be doing a clean show that night. Family-friendly show. No, no dirty jokes, no swearing. We'll see if I can do that. Uh, it's not often I have to do that except for like corporate gigs and things like that. But uh, mm, uh, come watch me watch my mouth. It'll be fun. Uh, Monday, uh, September the 19th, that's that podcast, live podcast, live under the crossbones in Burbank, California. Wednesday, no, uh, September the 21st, I will be at the Feelmore Gallery in Oakland, California. This will absolutely not be a clean show because the Feelmore Gallery is an adult toy store. Yep. Going to be playing with the sex toys on the wall. Well, I'm not going to be playing with them. I'm going to be playing in a room that has sex toys on the wall. Uh, yeah, it's a fun show. It actually, they pack it out. It's a lot of fun. So if you're in Oakland, come out to the Fieldmore Gallery on September 21st. Catch that. October is going to be slammed. So much going on in October. Uh, Washington, Oregon, uh, Florida, some California shows. I got Illinois coming up. I got Wisconsin coming up. 
San Diego. I'm going to be in San Diego later this year. So if you want to get all the tour dates, go to underthecrossbones.com, click on the tour dates button, and that, uh, that'll that point you in the right direction. And if you've never seen my stuff and you want to see my stuff, uh, you can you listen to me on Spotify. Just put in Phil Johnson on Spotify and I'll pop up. Uh, if you want to catch my last two comedy specials, they are both on Amazon uh, Video Direct right now. And you can check them out. If you're a Prime member, you can watch them for free. Uh, if you want to rent it, I think it's a buck ninety nine. If you want to buy it, it's like seven ninety nine. It's cheap, super cheap. And uh, so you can catch me. Just look up Phil Johnson on Amazon. And uh, if you're liking the show, and I hope you're going to hang out with us here, uh, go to Facebook.com slash Under the Crossbones. Twitter slash under crossbones, no the. And of course, you can always get all the show notes for this episode at underthecrossbones.com slash zero five six. And if you're digging the show and you want to help us out and keep us afloat, that would be awesome of you. Uh, hit the support page, underthecrossbones.com slash support. You can drop a PayPal donation in there. You can click the Amazon banner, make us a little commission when you buy yourself something nice. And if you want to be a sponsor of the show, that is cheap and easy. I will hook you up. All the information is there. All right. So I am going to go... Um, eat i haven't eaten eaten yet today i'm just fresh back from vegas and i managed to eat good in vegas and vegas i didn't even do anything in vegas really i got out to the strip like once uh for a little bit i'd wandered around caesar's the venetian a little bit and late late at night late like post midnight uh so it was just uh, a drunk uh lonely disappointed broke people mostly wandering around other than that i was watching comedy i saw hundreds of Hundreds. I'm not kidding. Hundreds of sets of comedy last week, and uh, and I'm gonna listen to some music now because <laughs> I'm kind of tired of comedy. But first, we're gonna listen to this interview with Matt Arthur. Are you ready? Dig in to the uh, Pirate History Podcast with Matt Arthur, which you can find at piratehistorypodcast.com, of course. And here is my interview with Matt Arthur. Check it out. So you were the host of the Pirate History Podcast, and. Um, First of all, why a pirate history podcast? What what brought you to that decision that that was what the world needed? It did, but why did you decide that? <laughs> right. Um, I really enjoy podcasts in general and history podcasts specifically. You know, mm-hmm. I started listening to Dan Carlin forever ago and then got further and deeper into that rabbit hole until I was listening to all sorts of stuff. And I really just enjoyed it. I think it's a great medium. And when it came to history podcasts, uh, I didn't really have any aim to do one, but I realized that after I read a book, it was, uh, it was called the Republic of pirates by Colin Wood. I would annoy all of my friends by just talking to them about all of the cool little stories and things in there that I found super interesting to the point where I had to stop talking about it with them. And I would just find myself talking about that stuff to myself in the shower in the morning. So I thought, <laughs> Really, why don't I go ahead and just share this with people? If I like it so much, I should go ahead and, and let other people hear it that might be interested in hearing about it too. That's great. So were you a piratey type person before that, or was that book just kind of a trigger? Um, th- that was kind of a trigger. You know, I I liked pirates. They were a cool thing, but I honestly thought of them as kind of like a, a, a kitschy thing that uh-huh. was for kids because that's so much of what we see in the media about pirates out there. Sure. It's all... Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and it's all lots of fun, and the pirates are always really, in the end, really nice people. You know, they're not all that bad. Uh, (laughs) And then when you start to really get into the nitty-gritty about who these pirates really were, you see a lot more about the bad things they actually did and some of the good aims they actually had. You know, they become fleshed out real people rather than cartoon characters. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. I, I I went through a lot of the same process, and I for myself, I came out of the the Disney fied pirate thing, and then I you know actually I think that may have been one of the first pirate books that I read as well. Um, I read mm-hmm. so many at this it's point. It's a fantastic book. Yeah, it really is a good one. And uh, so yeah, once I found the the history of it, I was like, oh yeah, there is more going on here uh, than uh, meets the Disney fied eye. Uh, which is really great. So how long have you been doing your show now? Um, I've been doing my show about four months now. Is that all? Really? Yeah, not a long, long time. Um, Well, let me do some math. I started in March. Yeah, about four months. Um, So yeah, not a long time. I tried at first to do a show a week, Uh which went really well at first because I had all of that stuff I was doing at the very first planned out and could really go to it. But the further and deeper I got into it, the harder it became to do a show a week. And I would realize there were new things I really wanted to talk about that I was, I didn't already have show notes prepped for it or anything like that. So I had to do a whole lot more prep. So sometimes it would take uh, two weeks to put one out. So that even slowed it down a bit more, but yeah, not a long time. 
uh, still only four months, and I'm really amazed at the response that I've gotten in that very short amount of time. I've had a lot of people give me a lot of positive feedback and a lot of support, and it's really just it's it's really humbling to get all that support in so short an amount of time. Yeah, it's it's a really well done show, and uh, for anybody that's listening that hasn't heard the show yet, uh, his voice is much deeper and m- more mellifluous uh, on the show when he's not talking on a cell phone to me. Um, <laughs> The, the sound quality. Try and talk on the on the interview here like this the entire time. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> just out of curiosity, uh, what what kind of microphone is that that you're using for your show? Um, that is just a Blue Yeti microphone, uh, which is a fantastic USB mic uh, that has uh, it's got a setting that's excellent for podcasts, but it's you know mid market. It's not a super expensive mic. Uh, but I, I built a sound booth for it, which is a big part of what helps the sound quality out. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah. Uh, that makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Well, I was trying so for the longest time to figure out a comfortable way to record, uh, sitting at a desk or whatnot, but I couldn't find a good way that got the sound quality I wanted out of it. So I had to build, a, you know, I've got to stand up to do it, which I actually kind of like because if you come from a background in stage acting like I do, you get uh-huh. a lot better vocal quality when you're standing up and you let your diaphragm breathe. So exactly. Uh, I, uh, and blue makes wonderful stuff. I talked to somebody the other day that was on a snowball and those sound fantastic. And my main vocal mic for, uh, recording vocals when I sing is a blue baby bottle. So yeah, I love blue mics. They're, oh, they're yeah. fantastic. So let's go back a little bit. Cause listening to your show, I was like, okay, this is not a guy who's never spoken in public before. And so you just mentioned that you've, you've got a theater background. Tell me a little about that. Well, I, I've, I've, been doing theater for a long period of my life. I started doing it when I was, you know, a kid in school, uh, went on to do some community theater, uh, where I was from, did some theater in college. That was a lot of fun. And, uh, then went on to go do some, uh, out in the real world theater for a little while. But I realized, and I did a couple of, uh, smaller kind of independent movie situations, mm-hmm. but I realized that acting really wasn't what I had any sort of passion for. It's, uh, it's too fierce a field and competition, and I don't really get the uh, the satisfaction from it I want. It started to feel kind of like I was pretending to be somebody I wasn't most of the time, even when I wasn't on stage. So <laughs> I decided to do something that was uh, a little bit more, you know, the things that I enjoyed were always reading books and learning about things. So I wanted to do something that was more uh, in line with that sort of thing. But no, I love being on stage it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, it really stokes the ego too to have a whole bunch of people pay attention to whatever lines you're reading. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that was part of the problem. But it was a it was a fantastic time to do it uh, when you're a, a young man enjoying that. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. What was your favorite part that you played? Um, probably Picasso in Picasso at the Latin Agile by Steve oh, Martin. Yeah, that's a great show. Uh, yeah, it's a fantastic show. Uh, and I, before I was in that, I had no idea that Steve Martin was a playwright as well. He's one of those guys that's really a jack of all trades, does everything. He's just fantastic. Uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun to do. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a fantastic show. And yeah, Steve Martin's he blows my mind. The the things that guy he's and I mean the banjo playing alone just kills me every time. Uh, the uh, mm-hmm. album the album we put out recently with Edie Burkell, I was like, there's a pairing I never would have thought of. And it's fantastic. I know. And it's, 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 it's fantastic. It's a wonderful album. And he's a great banjo player. Yeah. Really great. Really great. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. So, so the acting thing just wasn't, and I, I totally uh, understand that idea of it's because I get asked all the time, I'm a comedian by trade and, mm-hmm. and people are always like, so when are you going to move to LA and start acting? It's like, well, if I wanted to do that, I would have done that instead of this. Exactly. <laughs> And so many people that I acted with have, have really gone and done it, and I'm really proud of all of them. You know, a bunch of them have moved to L.A. or New York or what have you to be on stage or to go be in movies, and they're really making a name for themselves, and that's fantastic. I'm glad that so many people are, are able to do it, but I just don't think I have the, the kind of constitution it takes to do that job. You know, it's a, it's, that's a different lifestyle right there. It is. It's very different and and, and uh, very difficult. So you get into the podcast. Did you uh, just coming from having do doing stage work and stuff myself? Did you have to uh, change the way you speak when you had a microphone three inches from your face, based instead of the what you would do on stage? I, well, yes. Uh, you know, when you're on stage, you definitely have to emote in a very big way, and you have to enunciate very sharply, and you have to be kind of loud. Um, 
you know, to get everything out there. Even if you're mic'd, you know, you want to be projecting your voice as much as possible. Sure. And when you're when you're recording with a mic right there, then you've got to kind of hold some of that back, which I really kind of like. I think that's fantastic. The ability to, you still have any of the emotion you want to put in there or, you know, you can let all that out. It's sort of like being on camera as opposed to being on stage where you're able to do something in a much smaller kind of performance. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely. Because mm-hmm. I, I hear some of my com- comedian brethren get on the mic to do a podcast, and it's like, whoa, dude, just back off, back off from the mic, please, because you're yelling at it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Not that I haven't been guilty of yelling at the mic, but... <laughs> Oh, sure. There have been a couple of times where I've gotten really excited about one thing or another in the show, uh, whatever I'm talking about. On this last episode, it's when I was talking about the tactics that Diego the Mulatto was using uh, in one of his battles. Uh-huh. And I got super excited about it and got really into it. And then when I went back and listened to it, I had to re-record a whole segment because it was far too loud and a little too garbled and it was too much. You have to hold back just a little bit, just a little bit sometimes. That's, that's interesting. Cause I was just, I was just, um, going through your latest episode, episode 14, and I was just kind of skipping around it a little bit, and you're hosting on SoundCloud, and the player shows the uh, sort of a graph of the the sound wave, if not the sound wave itself, and I was like, ooh, that spikes right there. What's he talking about right there? And I'd skip over there and see what you were talking about that you got a little bit louder on. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, no, that's that's really great. I really like going to the SoundCloud player. Does that really? So uh, you're you're now 14 episodes in. Are you sort of kind of going in a chronological order through your history, or are you skipping around? Yes, I am at this point going in a chronological order. So when I started off, I wanted to start off with some very basic background information, you know, big picture stuff. I started off talking about the age of exploration and the Protestant Reformation, both of which are periods in history that I'm just fascinated with. So maybe I just used it as an excuse to talk about those. <laughs> and then you, you can hone in a little bit more on what you're talking about. You know, once Elizabeth and her adventurers join the scene, you get Francis Drake, John Winter, all of those cats. You're able to look at how they influenced the piracy that was to come. Now, in the next little segment of episodes, you might call it a chapter, in this next chapter, it's going to continue to be chronological throughout the 1600s. We're going to look at all of the pirates, and that was a big time for piracy. Uh, In a lot of ways, there were even more pirates active at that time than in the golden age of piracy in the early 1700s. But they're less well-known and less well-recorded because there were less people in the Caribbean that were writing stuff down at the time. Sure. But we're going to talk about a lot of them and go into all of that and how they are going to go on and influence the pirates that we all know and love, like Blackbeard, Charles Vane, Ed Lowe, all of those people. But when we get to the Golden Age proper, it's going to be a lot harder to do it in a chronological story because so many of these things are happening concurrently. You've got a bunch of different pirates I want to talk about that are doing things at the exact same time. Uh, We've got also Captain Woods Rogers, who is a governor that's going to come in and try and stop this pirate threat, and he's going to be doing things all throughout this. So if I were to talk about, say, just Captain uh, Captain Rogers, I would have to say, uh, and then he did this, well, if you remember two weeks ago when I said something about Blackbeard, so I'm going to have to kind of tie it all in, and I want to try and talk about one pirate or pirate ship at a time. I'll do an episode that's a Blackbeard episode. Here's what he was doing, and then I'll skip over to talk about somebody else, and here's what they were doing, and and move around like that. So it'll be somewhat less chronological, but still generally moving in time forward. It'll just just take more time to get there, because there's a lot more stories that are going to be woven into the fabric of it. That'll be interesting if you would sort of attack one ship at a time, so to speak, uh, and uh, because then you'll be able to interweave some of the stories as well. You'd be like, okay, so Blackbeard was doing this, da 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 da, and you may talk about Jack Rackham three weeks later, but those stories are going to tie together at some point. Exactly, exactly. Um, and I've got a, I've actually got a map maker who's going to be making some pretty spectacular maps that are going to, because so many of these things we don't know exactly where. Uh, a pirate went this time to this time, but we can make some assumptions based upon, you know, say they were going from one Bahamanian Island to another. We can know kind of how the winds would blow them. So unless they went well off course, 
uh, to perhaps evade authorities. We don't know that because they wouldn't have written that down, but we can usually presume how they would get from one place to another. So I'm going to make some maps about general movements, and I plan on, like, color coordinating different pirate ships in the area. So every week we'll kind of have an overview of, like, this is what happened this week, that, that sort of situation. Interesting. Yeah, it'll almost be like uh, like the news, but from hundreds of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's maybe I should use that gimmick. You know, they always say the team always rises. This week on Caribbean piracy, <laughs> I could do it like a, I could do it like an old wartime reel. You know, they're like, oh, the pirate menace is back again. Yeah, that could be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> that would be funny, actually. That would be very funny. Right. So yeah. do you have any do you have any favorite stories so far of stuff that just like really a story that really excited you that you got to tell on on your show? Um I think my favorite story and I think you can hear it in the way I tell it is the story of Francis Drake before he served Francis Drake when he's taking the the mule train carrying all of the Spanish treasure fleet's treasure overland from Panama City to Nombre de Dios. It is a it is just a beautiful little story that showcases a few things that I really like. Drake's ability to command and inspire the men under him, his ability to adapt to situations, and it's also just a lot of fun. There's so many things that couldn't be anticipated that are, that are almost kind of funny. You don't really see that sort of thing coming. You know, people, some random guy will screw up and will have to scotch the whole mission for two more weeks before the mule train's ready to go again. Hmm. Uh, so there's a lot of that. Plus, it's just a really exciting adventure story. And also, it's really great because Francis Drake was good about, and his men were good about keeping journals and keeping records. So there's so much information on the day-to-day activities of what happened during that raid, uh, which in a lot of raids before and after, there weren't quite as uh, there weren't quite as many records kept about what was happening. So that's the one that has really probably the most, aside from, you know, his circumnavigation, which is a big deal, and the Spanish Armada and that whole thing. But that's probably the one of his just raids that has the most primary sources on it. So you get a lot more picture of what's actually happening at the time. Interesting. And that, and that kind of brings up uh, uh, an interesting aspect to your show and most of the other history podcasts is it's, uh, it's a form of storytelling more than anything that I've noticed. It's not dry textbooky kind of stuff, which I think is what's bringing more people into it and more making more people enjoy history is because the stories are really great. You get into the details and not just names, dates, and places. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Um, there's a kind of a movement going on in history writing right now from legitimate academic PhD having historians that are trying to go more towards the storytelling method. And so you're finding a lot of really good books out there but still something about the spoken word, it really conveys so much more emotion than I think you can on a page. As much as I love books and I'm a total bibliophile, I've got a legitimate problem with them. <laughs> uh, I think that when you're hearing somebody tell a story, though, you get something more out of it. You really get to kind of interact with that person and feel what they're feeling at the time. It's, it's a lot more raw and it's a lot more real, I think. Yeah, certainly. And it, uh, not to, at this point, so much history has been... Uh, written and spoken about that now we can really get into the details of the tiny stories and do a whole book or a whole show or whatever it is on just this one tiny little aspect that people want to dig into mm-hmm. you know Absolutely. and I, I think that's a big difference these days it really is uh in the past you would get these historians who i think are great a lot of these historians had ideas and philosophies that they would talk about that were not just dusty old academic stuff they'd have things they wanted to get to, but they would be huge, big picture topics like the, like the Roman Empire in general. And it's like, wow, that's, that's quite big. <laughs> and now you'll, and now you get so many histories that these things have been so discussed and, and so thoroughly gone through that entire history books are written about like Roman footwear and the second century AD and how that impacted agriculture. And it's like, well, <laughs> I'm glad that somebody's getting into that, but I'm not going to read that book. That's <laughs> right. something for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my, my girlfriend was very dismayed one day when I came home with a book called The History of Bread. And she was like, oh, right. seriously? And I was like, it's like 700 pages. <laughs> right. Well, I bet, that's a, I bet that's a really great vehicle for the history of civilization, though, or at least Western civilization. Yeah. Um, you know, bread and agriculture in general are a big deal. And what's that? Uh, what's that book? I think it's just called Salt. That's just about salt and its right. history, but salt plays such a big role in 
every civilization up until refrigeration to keep food preserved, um, then it can really tell the story of the world, just talking about salt. Just in looking at that one thing, you can really talk about all sorts of other things. Yeah, exactly. That's really kind of what I'm doing with this show. As much as I love the story of these particular pirates and like pirates in general, I think they're a fascinating subject. I really think that they're a perfect picture to look at uh, democratic reforms and religious reforms that led to the world that we have today. Mm -hmm. These were pirates that I don't want to downplay the fact that they were greedy, violent, murderous criminals because they were greedy, violent, murderous criminals. But they also were people that had certain ideas about freedom from the kind of rule that they'd seen their entire lives and God as it had been presented to them their entire lives. And they were really fighting for that cause as well as, you know, being violent men that filled their own pockets and took whatever they wanted. <laughs> right. uh, these, these two things, they seem, you know, one seems like a glorious democratic principle and the other seems vile and violent and horrible, but somehow in this one tiny time and this one tiny group of people, they really kind of blended together to create something that has been really a huge part of American and world mythology ever since it happened. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it's a, an interesting lens to look through just as if it were bread or salt, but uh, more interesting because they have swords. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty true. I like salt, but swords are kind of cooler, aren't they? Uh, that's great. So what's the stuff that you're looking forward to getting to that you just kind of, kind of can't wait until you get to that point? Well, right now we're on the very cusp, the very verge of really getting into Captain Morgan talking about oh, okay. Henry Morgan, um, which he's another one of those characters that very much like Francis Drake. There was a lot, you know, he kept records. He was knighted. He was arrested several times. So there's a lot about him. Uh -huh. We know quite a bit about him. So that's something I'm really going to be able to sink my teeth into and talk a lot about. Um, beyond that, that's also going to be a period when England and Europe in general was in turmoil. So I'm going to be talking about Henry Morgan while kind of concurrently talking about the English Civil War and then the Glorious Revolution that would come some decades after and the other wars in Europe that are going to really form the world that the pirates in the golden age find themselves in. And Henry Morgan is really kind of a product of that time, a post Elizabethan golden age for English society. And so I'm going to be able to tell both of those stories. And I'm really looking forward to telling both of them because there's something that I think for a lot of pirate fans out there is under discussed. You hear about him, but he, he kind of gets brushed aside because shortly after that, we get to Captain Avery and Captain's Peach and Bane and Rackham and all of those people who are very well known and a lot of fun to read about, who I'm also very much looking forward to. But that's still a couple of months away, so I'm trying not to look that far ahead. <laughs> nice. Well, those, those will be great shows. So how, um, in your preparation for the show, are you scripting out the entire thing or are you sort of freewheeling it a little bit? Um, uh, There's a blend of both. When I first started, I tried to do it entirely off of just note taking, just uh -huh. here's points I want to hit. And it was, I really liked the way that the show came out. Uh, and it had a very conversational style and I was able to interject all sorts of tangents, little things I wanted to talk about, which was a lot of fun. But I also realized that I didn't necessarily hit everything that I wanted to get to. I lost some of that, like this point kind of informs upon this point that I'm going to make in just a minute. Uh -huh. And I would have to go back and be, and it's, it's like when you screw up telling a joke and you have to, you know, say, Oh yeah, I forgot, you know, she had a boop on hairdo. Uh, right. you have to go back <laughs> and change things. A little. So I'd use a slightly more scripted approach, but I, I don't, I try not to just read off my script. I try to kind of read what I want to talk about in the next little bit reprocess that through my brain and then put it into the microphone and then just talk about it as I would talk about it. Mm, yeah. Uh, spoken like a true actor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the way that stuff works. That's good. That's good. And so then as a podcaster, what did you, what kind of process are you going through to get the word out about your show? Since there is a sort of a, 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 a there's a community around history podcasts like that. Mm -hmm. There absolutely is. First of all, I am very bad at, marketing and self-promotion 
and all of these things. I wish I was better at them, but I, I've always, they've always been the thing that I'm worst at, <laughs> but I've, I started off using, you know, the Twitter and Facebook are obvious things that you want sure. to get on there and start a little community and a following. Um, I have a lot of, of really nice support on Reddit. I, I am a Redditor. I really enjoy the website and there's a pirate subreddit and a uh-huh. history podcast subreddit that were both very welcoming places. And actually that history pirate or history podcast subreddit has its own website called historypodcast.com. And uh-huh. the moderator is a super nice guy. Uh, just found the show and put it up there. And it's a really great resource for anybody looking for history podcasts. Hmm. They do, they do featured shows that are kind of get pushed to the top and it's just a great little spot. So it's definitely a worthwhile thing to use, but that was one of the first people that reached out to me and was like, Hey, I like your show. I'd like to put it out into the world. Um, <laughs> <That's great. laughs> beyond, beyond that, I've got, uh, I finally was able to get some help around here who are people that know a lot more about how to make a beautiful website and how to do, how to do the YouTubes as the kids say. <laughs> um, because my videos were, I tried to put some YouTube videos up, and they were just horrible. They were they were not attractive videos. Um, and the sound quality was okay, so I was like, that's fine. That's all that matters. But they yeah. made them look a lot better. And so, you know, that's, I think a big part of it is you've got to, especially with the Internet age, when you're dealing with putting things out onto the Internet, you know, there are no gatekeepers. There's nobody telling you that this is what we're looking for in our 7:30 slot and you've got to be able to sell X amount of insurance to do it. Right. You can just put anything you want out there and anybody who's interested, hopefully will be able to find some, but because of that, you kind of just got a scatter shot, just get it out there as much as possible. And, and hopefully people will be able to find it because as far as promotion, uh, that's been tough. Most of that has happened through, honestly, other people's word of mouth. Uh, a lot of people have been really kind and shared the show and talked that they're enjoying it. So I think it's really starting to spread around. Yeah, I think that's a that's a big part of it because as much as we want to talk about our shows to other people, it's when other people talk about our shows that really makes the huge, huge difference. And that's the thing that I've seen with this show too as well is that it's just that little bit of word of mouth. Somebody posts it up somewhere and then you get a big influx. Yeah. Well, I've had, a, I've had actually a couple of... of Casters reach out to me and give me shout outs. That was really awesome. First of all, I guess you know, Captain Craig Buddy from over at History of Pirates was one of the first ones. Sure. Uh, yeah, on that same episode, actually, I believe he gave both of us a little shout out while he was in, in kind of his hiatus. And that was yep. very nice of him. He's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and then more recently, there was a, a show. I am a big Game of Thrones fan. It's, mm. uh, it's next to my problem with books, it is probably my biggest vice. <laughs> I love the lore and all the mythology of it. I think it's fantastic. But there was a, a podcast that I was listening to called History of Westeros that talks about uh, the shows as they're coming out and then goes into the mythology of the book worlds and the history of the book world. Uh-huh. And I started chatting with him, and he is a big fan of pirates and pirate mythology. He really likes the Black Sails TV show. Uh, and he gave me a shout-out on a couple of his episodes, and it was pretty awesome. And I saw a big jump in numbers, actually. There were a lot of people listening to that that uh, were looking for something else to listen to. So it was a really excellent shout-out, and I appreciate that a lot. Fantastic. That's great. Well, now you've got a giant shout-out here on this show as well. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. you got a 30-minute uh, shout-out here. <laughs> exactly. It's it's wonderful. No, I love your show. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and you get some guests that are just amazing. I don't know how you get to talk to these people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> honestly... <laughs> I'm amazed sometimes myself. I'm like, oh, how do I get to talk to this guy? It's funny now because I've gotten to the point where if I hear somebody interesting, uh, I go, I go, I wonder if they have any sort of pirate connection that I could rationalize bringing them on the show. <laughs> so I see you're fond of linen shirts, aren't you? Yes. Well, you know, pirates wore linen shirts. What's up about your <laughs> Right. I can get every um, rock star on. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's 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 also. I thought when I first started the show, uh, when I first started even working on a show about pirates, uh-huh. um, what exactly I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to tell narrative history, but I also wanted to do some other little things, some of which are still in the works, some of which are still happening. But one of the things I wanted to do was uh, interview people that uh-huh. might be into it. And I, this was before I had heard of your show, before I had gotten into podcasts and it, on, on the deeper level that I am now. Uh-huh. And I talked to somebody that was from uh, a museum in, in on Cape Cod uh, up near Boston. Uh-huh. 
uh-huh. uh, about doing that. And I believe you spoke to them already. Yeah. A museum curator. And I, was, and, and I had a couple of those experiences where I was like, oh, yeah, I'll do it. But there was this other guy that I already talked to. And I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> And then I found it, and it's, oh, wow, he's a way better interviewer than I could ever be. So it's a fantastic show you got. I love it. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. That's very cool. And, uh, yeah, every we all have our own little niche. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's great. So we're it's you, me, and Craig. We're out there. We're doing the pirate podcasting. So uh, anybody that's listening yeah, to pirates, absolutely. you don't have to listen to any <laughs> other shows. <laughs> exactly. This is this is all you guys need right here. No, um, and I still think it would be a lot of fun for the three of us. Uh, Craig and I have talked about this to do some sort of collaboration. Uh, yeah. Perhaps if there's some sort of big pirate event that we all want to talk about, that's something. I'm just going to go off on tangent here. Cool. I didn't. I didn't have any idea about the the pirate fandom that existed out there. Uh-huh. You know, I liked pirates. I liked the pirates of the Caribbean movies. I liked them up at treasure Island as a kid. I'm a big <laughs> fan of black sales. I thought pirates were cool. And I really enjoyed reading about them and learning about the real history behind them. You know, it's a, it's a thing, but doing this show, I found out there are so many people that are like Ren fair people only for pirates. And I've always been a Renaissance festival person, but these people, they, they're all sorts of, festivals and organizations about pirates and it's so cool I had no idea these people were out there and uh-huh. now I've got to go find the time to pull myself away from my book and go out to those events and meet those people because it seems like a good time if the three of us could get together and go do something like that do one of those events, or, or or some other collaboration that would get us all to work together I think that would be a lot of fun for sure I think I'm going to have to come out to your guys end of the continent probably to do that yeah, he's over here on this coast, isn't he? Yep. Uh, well, but then you could go down. We could all go down to Florida and go see St. Augustine. I'm sure there's stuff down there. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, Matt, this has been super fun, buddy. I'm glad we got to. Uh, I'm glad we got a chance to do this and get it all together. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very glad too. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. So your website is piratehistorypodcast.com. I'm going to link that up in the show notes and make sure everybody goes over there and checks it out. Excellent. That sounds very kind of you. I appreciate it. Cool, man. We'll talk again soon. All right. Sounds good. All right. All right. Have a good one. Right. You too. Bye. And there it is, friends. That was my interview with Matt Arthur of the Pirate History Podcast, which you can, of course, find at piratehistorypodcast.com. Uh, it's a great show. If you're digging the history stuff, if you're like a Dan Carlin fan or any of that kind of stuff, make sure you check him out. Also, make sure that you're checking out the History of Pirates podcast with Craig Buddy. They're both good. They touch on different stuff, uh, but uh, it's uh, they're both fun shows. I'm the guy doing the interviews. That's that's me. I talk to people. I talk to not dead people. They they talk about dead people. I talk to not dead people. That's the difference between our shows. And speaking of uh, not dead people, there are uh, people out there who are trying to steal your identity, and it's a drag, and you should not have that done to you. I just got a note the other day that one of my passwords had been hacked. Uh, something else happened recently. It's out. It's like the number two crime in the world right now is identity theft, and you can keep that from happening by getting yourself a LifeLock membership. Just go to underthecrossbones.com slash LifeLock, click the little Start Your Membership button, and you can get 10% off. Uh, it's the cost of doing business these days, and it's uh, it's uh, it's it's easy, and it doesn't uh, doesn't it's not painful at all. It's really really easy. They'll help you clean up anything that's out there. Got a free ebook for you. It's Alexander X. Quemlin's Pirates of Panama Bay or the Buccaneers of America, whichever alternate title you uh, prefer, and uh, you can get that just by going to underthecrossbones.com uh, sl- uh, and clicking the free ebook button. And it'll you can get it right there. And this is a seminal piece of pirate writing from the Golden Age, written by a guy on a pirate ship. He was a doctor. It's really interesting stuff. And uh, if you haven't read it, it's uh, and you dig pirates, this is a must read. It's an absolute must read, and you're gonna like it. If you're out and about and you don't want to typey typey typey, all you have to do it's real easy. Pull out your little phone that you're probably listening to me on right now, and you text the word pirate and your email address to uh, 94253. Just text the word pirate and your email address to 94253. All right, so we got some comedy and music today. We're going to hear some comedy from Ebo Brewer, who is a very funny dude. Uh, He came in uh, second place in the World Series of Comedy last year. And uh, very, very funny, very... um, very visual, too, so I'm going to try not to give you a visual bit here, but uh, very, very funny guy, Ebo Brewer, and, uh, of course, you can find him at Facebook.com slash Ebo Brewer, uh, Ebo Comedy. Sorry, it's Ebo is I-B-O. And then we're going to hear a song called Rescue Me by Ulrich Ellison, a very talented blues rock guitarist out of Austin, out of Austin, which seems obvious for blues rock, right, but comes from, like, Vienna and Europe. He's a European guy. 
Great song. You're going to dig that. All right, so let's dig in. We're going to hear some comedy from Ebo Brewer. I'm going to try that again. We're going to hear some comedy from Ebo Brewer, and then we're going to hear Rescue Me by Ulrich Ellison. Enjoy. There's a lot of homeless in um, Los Angeles. Uh, make some noise. Um, <laughs> there's two kind of homeless. You know what I'm saying? There's people in between homes. You know what I'm saying? And there's the career homeless. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just wear a dirt as a uniform. You know what I'm saying? And, like, uh, I, saw this, I, saw this, I saw this one homeless dude on a trip. Uh, he, was, he was one of the career homeless. Um, he was... <laughs> He was on the bus stop, you know, that's like the club for homeless people. <laughs> and he answered his cell phone. He was like, hello? Yeah, I can talk. When can't you talk? <laughs> You're homeless. What's, what's going on in your homeless day to day that you don't have time for a conversation? What are the scenarios? Hello? Man, cans are crazy right now. Let me call you back. <laughs> Hello? Man, my cart is messed up. I gotta take it back to Target. It's got a squeaky wheel. Let me call you back. <laughs> Hello? Man, can't you see I'm on the phone? Every time I get on the phone, you wanna, oh, you wanna start now? You wanna start now? Okay, uh, Hello? Man, I'm having an argument with myself. Let me call you back. It was a cool day in September. Your pump dress is still.
that is our show for today, friends. Thank you once again for tuning in. You can get all the show notes and links and all that fun stuff from this episode if you go to underthecrossbones.com slash 056. It'll all be there. If you want to hear more about Matt Arthur and the Pirate History Podcast, go to piratehistorypodcast.com. If you want to check out more comedy from Ebo Brewer, go to facebook.com slash Ebo Comedy. And Ebo is I-B-O Comedy. And if you want to hear more music from Ulrich Ellison, and I know you do, go to ulrichellison.com. Ulrich with uh, one L U L R I C H Ellison E L L I S O N. All right, that's hard to remember, especially if you're like driving right now. Just come to the show notes; all the links will be right there under the crossbones.com slash zero five six. If you haven't left us that nice review on iTunes yet, uh, that is super helpful, and I like to read them. Make sure you're subscribed over there as well. That helps it bump us up the charts, and more people come on in and listen. All right. Until next week, uh, keep the sails up. May you have a fair wind, all that other piratey stuff, and I'll talk to you then. Bye.